I stumbled across this post in the frontend subreddit. Please help, why was I rejected in my frontend first round interview? I am a React developer with 4 years of experience. I recently gave an interview where I was given a simple task to make the provided checkboxes functional. I achieved the tasks and yet got rejected. Please help me understand the weak points of my solution so that I can improve myself. The time limit was 40 minutes. So here they laid out all of the requirements. Now in short, the challenge is simply, you render a checkbox with the label select all, then you have an array of countries, you render the array, and for each country you render a checkbox. So it's simply a small demonstration of handling state, leveraging derived state, and well, the logic of checking and unchecking the countries. Now the challenge is, if you click on select all, it should select all of the countries. So all of these should now become true. If you click on select all once again, this is now false. That means that these ones must now be false, because you unchecked all of the selected ones. You can likewise select each country individually, but if you select all of the countries, the select all input should be checked. Let me show you the end solution. This is the code provided by this person, by the original poster. They have the select all. If I click on it, all of them are selected. If I click on it, all of them are unselected. Then if I check India, USA, and then France, as you can see, this one becomes checked. Now, if I uncheck India, well, select all is now unchecked. So this is the challenge. Now, if you want, you can pause the video, give it a try. I'll go over my solution. And then we're going to do a code review of this person's solution. Okay, so now let's go over my solution. So for this, I declared a type alias country. We have the ID, which is of type number, and then the name of type string. Then we have an array of countries, which satisfies this type. So this is a way to make sure that this type is being enforced in this array without overriding the original type. We then have this app component. We render a fragment with a label and an input of type checkbox. So this one is for the select all. And then we have a list of all of the countries. We map over each country. We set the key to be the ID of each country. And then we have a nested label with an input of type checkbox and the name of the country. So for this, we need to have a way to keep track of the countries the user is selecting. So we can declare a state const selected countries, set selected countries, and then react dot use state and we initialize this with an empty array and this will be of type country so now we need to make this input into a controlled input so we know that it should be checked if all of the countries are checked so when we click on it if all of the countries are checked then we simply set the selected countries to its initial state which is an empty array Otherwise, we set the selected countries to all of these countries. So how can we check if all of the countries are selected? Well, for this, we can derive this state. So we can say const are all countries selected is equal to selected countries dot length is equal to the countries dot length. So now we can say checked is equal to are all countries selected? And now we can define the onChange handler. And this is simply set selected countries. And we can say, are all countries selected? If they are, then unselect all countries. Otherwise, we set them to the countries. So we select all of the countries. And now we can hit save and we can implement the logic for each country. So in this case, we just need to check if this country is within the selected countries. That way we can control the state of this input. 
so checked if the country is within the array of selected countries. So what I'm going to do is open these brackets. So the body of the function, we can say const is selected is equal to selected countries dot find. Then we get the ID of each country and then we compare it to the country's ID. And then this will be different from undefined. So remember, find will return to you the element if it exists or undefined if it doesn't. That way, by using this comparator, we can make sure that is selected is a Boolean. And then we can close this and return this instead. And now we can come here and say checked is selected. And then the on change, we check if is selected, then we set the selected countries to be selected countries dot find or dot filter, we get the ID of each country. And we can say where the country dot ID is different from the ID. So remember, the filter method is like a where so where the ID of the country is different from this one. So keep those countries and filter out this country. And we can say else set selected countries to be the previous selected countries, and then this new country. And this should now work. Let's give it a try. If I come here and deselect United States, it works. If I select it, all of them are selected. If I click on select all, all of them are unselected. And what about France and US and then Canada and everything seems to be working fine. So unselect, then select all. So as we can see, the solution is very basic. We are deriving everything from this state. There is no need to declare multiple states want to keep track of the selected countries, the other four if all of the countries are selected, and maybe someone might declare a state for this. Now there are some variations to the solution, you could perhaps use some instead of find or even filter. But considering this is for a technical interview, you're not going to get this perfect. But at the very least, your solution will most likely suffice. And you are not abusing state nor use effects. So in my opinion, 40 minutes for this is a tad bit too long. I would say this might take you 15 to 20 minutes at most. Anyway, let's check out the original poster submission. So for readability, I copied over his solution and pasted it here in StackBlitz so that we get syntax highlighting and whatnot. So for starters, does it work? Well, let's check it out. Select all, it works. Unselect all, works. Then India, US, everything works. And France, and this is checked. So yes, it works. Now let's check it step by step. So they define the countries. Then they have const is all checked, set is all checked. So instead of deriving the state, they handle the all checked in its own state, which is actually not ideal. Then we have the checked countries and an empty array at first. There is no type annotations, even though they're using TypeScript. Anyway, they have a use effect, which is going to trigger every time the checked countries change. And then they set is all checked by checking if the checked country's length is equal to the original country's length. So again, this is not the best solution. You should not be using use effect if you can derive this state. Furthermore, you should not even be using use effect unless you're trying to synchronize something in your application with something that is external. So the browser API or an API for fetch calls, whatever it is. So again, this is not good. Then they have handle checkbox toggle, they pass in the country ID, they check if the checked countries dot includes the country ID. So surprise, 
the checked countries are actually IDs, not the countries themselves. This is fine, but at least make it clear in its name. So checked IDs or selected countries IDs, whatever. Just make sure that your naming is clear. To me, checked countries tells me that this is an array of countries, not an array of IDs. And then they set the checked countries, they get the previous checked countries, and then they filter them out. Otherwise, if the country is not checked, they add it to the array. Same solution as I did. Then they have the function handle check all, then set is all checked, they get the previous boolean, then they toggle the boolean by inverting the condition, and then they check if toggled, then set the checked countries to get country IDs, so they use this function where they map over each country and extract the ID, returning back to us an array of IDs, and then they spread them over. So why are they spreading it if this already returns to us an array of IDs? You can simply get rid of these curly braces and set the invocation of the function. Otherwise, they set it to an empty array and then they return toggled. So as we can see, this isn't really clean code and it is very but very redundant. Now they have the input select all, is all checked, then handle check all and then the id to be the country.id. Now, why is this throwing an error? Okay, so id actually expects a string, but this works nonetheless. And then the input, type checkbox, and then they use dot includes, and then they handle the checkbox toggle, which is this logic right here. So a couple of areas for improvement, make sure to use derived state. So you can remove this, it's all checked, and declare a constant that will derive this boolean from these checked countries. Second, make sure to use proper naming conventions. If this is an array of IDs, then make it explicit. Now, they also need to get rid of this use effect, as I said before, and this is fine. But again, with types and with better naming conventions, this would become much clearer. And then the handle check all, well, you could get rid of this line entirely or this function declaration, which again is redundant. And for the logic right here, it's not the best because here you're checking if the input is checked, but then you abstract the same logic in the function invocation. So now you need to come here and check how is this logic being done. So you're basically repeating the logic because you're checking if the checked countries includes the countries IDs. And if I come here to this function, you're doing the same. So code duplication, make sure not to abstract this too much. And as I did, you can define is selected within each iteration. And at the very least, it becomes very clear upon which condition you're filtering the selected countries, which is not clear again, in this logic. With that said, that concludes this code review. Now you may have noticed that this person sometimes uses the callback for set state. In this case, they do not use it, but for this one, they get the previous checked countries. Now in my solution, I believe I didn't use it. However, you can come here to the official documentation to the section where they say updating state based on the previous state. So when you have a lot of setters right beside each other and you do not use the callback like they do here, where they get the previous one and then they add it, then it will not behave as you would expect it to behave. So in this case, if you do this thrice, instead of getting 43, 44, and then 45, you get 43. But if you use the previous callback, you do get the state updated correctly. And they even have a code example here. So passing the updater function and then passing the next state directly. Now this applies if you're going to use the set state multiple times consecutively. In our case, in this application, we're not doing this. So it's okay not to use the updater function. 
but obviously just to be safe you should be using the updater function whenever you need to perform logic based on that previous information. So in other words, when you use the current state to create the new state. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a lot. If you're interested in videos like this, make sure to subscribe. See you later.